Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afo Labi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Obia Jilu. Hi, how so are you? I love the beads. Thank you. I want to look like my village people today. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. How was Valentine's yesterday? Valentine was fine, but oh. I'm not talking Valentine. Miriam is here to give us Valentine juice. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Oh, so okay. I'm very busy right now. <laughs> I'm getting ready for my Creating Your Desired Reality Masterclass okay. that is happening on the 27th. Thank you, girls. On the 27th of February. Uh, the course is just designed to help people who are tired of being in one level. People who feel like they have experienced a lot of negativity and they want to move out of there. People who still see themselves as a victim, but they are tired of it. Because I want to open their eyes to see that they are co-creators with God. You can actually say, this is what I want and work towards it. And have the right beliefs backing it up. And you would have it. Some of us have been able to come out of darkness into a place where... I can say that I am happy, I am successful. Even if it seems small to another person, that's my own design. And mm -hmm. you can be that person for yourself. So okay. registration is ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Thank great, you. Great, great. <laughs> Hi, Irene Tapwe. I'm very, very good. I'm grateful to God for life. And um, I, I, can I ask how I was Valentine? <laughs> well, yes. Valentine? So Valentine yesterday, BC, myself, and Nima went oh, out. Yes. We so were trying to drag you, but you had it. Yeah. Had it so for me, and I, we really yeah. enjoyed. I'm we so waited glad. for Nima to go and deliver rice and deliver Gary. Gary before coming, but <laughs> Nima finally showed up. But oh. I think it was just cool that we were able to hang out because if we didn't, the, I wouldn't have any other thing to do <laughs> that day. Same here. You know, and then now I, I wish I hung up with you guys. I yeah. went to my children's school and. And I got a bit of feedback. feedback that I did not like. And I thought, I was going to feel bad, but I felt like, mm, it's feedback. Mm, it's not a, take it. it's okay. It's a feedback that will now address. Work on it. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we'll now start feeling bad that, oh, how did I not notice mm. this thing was happening? No, no, no. Parents, when you get feedback, it's a feedback. You will now plan how you will Do address better. it. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, Maria? I'm good, I'm good. So how was your weekend? We haven't seen uh, you yeah, yesterday. Yeah, of course. We know the book cruise was fantastic. <laughs> it was fabulous. <laughs> Um, yesterday was fine. I mean, but uh, I spent many hours up last night because I was with a young man who was um, attempting suicide. Mm. I found his message. I don't know. I usually don't even read some of his messages on someone's page. And I went and I saw that he had already gotten a sniper. And I was on the phone with him for a long time. Mm. Hopefully, um, I think... By the time we finished talking until this morning, he seemed to be in a better place. Mm. And he's just a young boy with young people's issues. I don't know, young people, it's okay to struggle. No it, happened, it has happened to everybody, it's happening to everyone. I know that you're constantly you know, seeing different pictures and videos of people doing fantabulously well, and that is fine. That's their journey. But it's also normal to struggle before you get to you where get you are. It. You're so young and you, you're, like it's you're, over. you, you mm. think it's over because you're going through life's journey. It's wow. okay. Mm. I, I just could not imagine when I saw the young, when I finally saw his picture. And his, I'm like, you're just a young child. This is what you have to go through to understand life. And then when you finally get to your own place of success, mm. you will, you know, you would even you understand, you even understand how to keep it right. and use right. it and help others. Really, really, really shocking. Shocking. I just hope that you're able wow. to continue that. I hope, that so. Yeah. I hope so. All right, so let's go straight into the papers. We can't take any more breaks. Uh, so start with the time. nation. <laughs> Abba Kiari for extradition to US after um, the NDLA probe. Osho APC primary guns boom panic in Oshogbo. APC convention <coughs> sale of form fails to begin. Excitement over new Ulubado. Asu grounds buses for four weeks. And why customs can't meet the 3.019 trillion dollar target by CG. It's a YX story at the, back, at the end. Did yeah, uh, for the 6.6. Private candidates pass was Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Everywhere, the, so we just yes. get it out. So we know that our nation has been agog with the arrest of, um, as they say, former Super Cup um, Abakari. Hmm. We had heard the story of how he was affiliated with the internet froster Hush Puppy. And then yesterday we saw um, video, a video and just reports on a sting operation by NDLA indicting him in an um, illicit and illegal drug mm -hmm. um, you know, business. 
Um, he's been arrested by NDLA, and it's also reported that he may also be extradited to the United States of America for the other crimes that he had committed with the internet fraudster. Um, they said that this um, operation had happened, and the report sent four, four days before mm. to the police, and they were dragging their feet to release him to the NDLA. That it took um, um, the chairman of NDLA to talk with the presidency, and the presidency insisted that he, that he be handed be over to the NDLA. We hope that this will be properly investigated and prosecutions properly done. Yeah. And Nigerians will see. All right, let's take a yeah, story. so um, according to the West African Senior School Certificate Examination uh, for Private Candidates 2021 Second Series, they reported that uh, about 48.61 uh, candidates who sat for the examination made uh, five credits and above, especially in English and mathematics. And um, as they mentioned the results, they said this was a better performance compared to the other performances that they've been having. It's a 25,008 <coughs> of them, candidates represented 48.61% out of the 48.61. Then the other people, um, let me quickly get the detail here. Obtain credits above, okay. So uh, <coughs> out of that, they said 12,272 percent, uh, 2,000 were male candidates and 12,736,000 were female candidates in this uh, category. Right. So they also mentioned that, um, uh, you know, they've said that uh, the requirements for registration, you must have your NIN, but they are saying this is not going to affect any uh, candidates from getting into the examinations. They will take their time to get that. And also, um, people can go ahead and do their registrations for the upcoming <coughs> examinations. There are yeah. some results that they are going to be seizing for a bit because they are investigating if right. okay. there's an exam or practice involved in it. Want them. to take a story? Talk yes, about I want to take the custom. So the custom was speaking at the House of Representative Committee on Custom and Excise, and he explained why he will not be able to achieve the target of three trillion. You know, we're on a drive to raise funds as a government from every level to fund the huge deficit in our budget right now. So he's explaining that the reason he cannot, um, we can't hit that target of three trillion is because there's, we have outdated laws, we have porous borders, and the government's current policy of, not, of um, exclusion of importers and asking them to source dollars by themselves would reduce produce coming into the country. And so these are the reasons, and many more, mm. why he doesn't believe that they'll be able to hit the projected figure. More importantly is the porous borders, because people bring in things without having to pay custom officially. Okay, uh, we're now quickly to the punch. Drug business, police tackle and DLA, agency <coughs> detains Abakiai for others. UN corporate FG, as Nigeria, because 3,604 cholera deaths in 425 local governments. Lagos robbers shoot businesswoman, hospital demands police report, victim dies. Again. Mm. Wife disagrees as husband testifies how spouse killed friend, dismembered body. Family dodges questions as 2023 presidential bid says prayer ongoing. It's historical fallacy to say Ohanezi hasn't campaigned enough to a 2023, says Obioso. Hughes custody armed policemen deployed to control queues, commuters stranded. For the two-day vacancy, Makinde names Lake Kombalogos for the second Olubadon. And FG gross debt to grow by 92%. Hit 1.136 trillion in 2026, says IMF. So the UN has the Like, this one is now, they say you, the United Nations carpets Nigeria mm. because of our, uh, the, the, the level of unpreparedness towards cholera. We lost 3,604 people last year. And it is extremely avoidable, said that when COVID happened, everybody rushed with eagerness, political eagerness to deal with COVID, but they're not seeing equal political eagerness to address mm, the issues cholera. of cholera. That the ministry, the number of cholera, cholera reported in 2021 was 111,000 with Three, over um, 3,600 deaths. And um, it's just really sad that we're having to be receiving this kind of backlash from the UN when it is an issue that we can... It's, a, it's an hygiene issue. It's a preparation mm. issue. It's yeah. a health sector issue. Mm. And we can do much more to prevent having these huge figures again in 2022. Yeah. Let's talk about fuel scarcity for a minute. Um, 
armed policemen were deployed to control queues, especially in Abuja. They were having issues. According to them, petrol that was selling for 400 naira per liter increased to 500 naira per liter yesterday, especially. Mm. And they were saying that many marketers were still complaining that they had the, they have the adulterated fuel still within their tankers. So they're asking the government, what can you do to help us either um, um, get rid of these things or even stop it from coming in? So they're having an issue right now with those who have already had the contaminated fuel mm. and how to dispose of it. <clears throat> Uh, and that, that's a major problem. Who is taking the responsibility yeah. of the disposal? Yeah. So I have the human interest story. Um, on the 30th of January, a woman, Udwak Oluye, they were shot dead by um, robbers. She was just closing up shop um, um, in, in her area in Aguda, in Surulere area. And then three men on a bike um, stopped in front of her and took her, you know, dispossessed her of all her valuables. And when they were leaving, they shot her in her stomach. She was able to run to her neighbor, who um, got her in the car, and they rushed her to the nearest like a hospital where they, able to, they were able to stop the bleeding. But they told them that they had to transfer her to take her to a bigger hospital because they could not do anything more for her. So they took her mm. to Randall Hospital. Yeah. And Randall Hospital insisted that they come with a police report. <coughs> so while they left her there, they, she said she now rushed to the police station in um, the area to get the police, that in fact the policeman followed her and was writing the report in the car. But by the time they got there, even though that they saw that they had placed an oxygen and drip, she had passed on. Oh my God. That they were just insisting on the police report <coughs> and that the husband should sign. The husband is really, um, of course, as we know, quite despondent. He says he has two children. He had to go back home to tell them that their mother is no more because mm. the hospital was insisting on, on the signing report. and police report. And he says that since the incident happened, he hasn't heard anything from the police. He wants mm. justice. He needs to know. Um, there hasn't been any trace of the people that did this to her. And that that incident that happened was the second one in that area on that day. I thought they uh -huh. had many law. They responded it. So they what's happening? Randall they of all hospitals. Yes. This is Randall of all. Randall is not no. just any, not just any oh. hospital. <coughs> no, they so can't be sued for this. So. This is really yes. Okay. When we come, come back. back. You know, we'll you stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still in punch. Uh, yes, I have a, another human interest story. So a couple was arrested by men of the Ogun State Police Command with fresh human parts. Wow. And they narrated how uh, the lady killed um, a, a friend and sold the head for 70,000 naira. So while they were narrating the story, the woman said that um, the man, they disagreed. So the woman, the man reported that the wife brought a friend home on Tuesday and brought that friend home again on Thursday. And by the time the friend came, she had made noodles and egg for her. After eating, by evening, the lady was still around. So he had to ask the wife, is she not going home? He said, no, that uh, um, she's a bit weak. She needed to lie down a bit before going home. And so he went to the back here. And before he came out, the wife had killed this woman, severed her head, and put it in a bucket, and then called him in. And he was like, ah, what happened? He said eh, that the friend used to be a very bad person that she has not forgiven her for what she did to her a long time ago. And so she decided to pay back. And then they started discussing how do they sell the head. Okay. The man contacted a friend, I think one Mr. Michael, uh, to come and buy this head for 70,000 naira. So while the man was there, uh, the woman said, no, you are lying. No, this is not what happened. I did not have any hand in this. The man said, ah, ah, a uh, policeman, can you see me? I'm very weak. I cannot kill a human being. So they were going back and forth. But they forgot the fact that it was him who contacted the friend to sell this human head. It's just they are still in police custody, uh -huh. and I think more investigations will be done. So do we not go to friends' houses again and need eat noodles and eggs? Oh, I don't get it. Human yes. beings. We can talk about chicken. For 70,000 naira. Every day. Now we talk about human bodies, human parts every day. It has now become business. It has become a daily conversation. And, and we can tie it to some of our economic challenges. No, but the I'm federal like, government this is... This wickedness. Um, IMF is saying that federal government debt is going to rise to 92%. I'm wondering what will be left, that by 2026, 
our debt profile will be at 92 percent. That means everything will not be mm -hmm. debt that it's going to hit 136 trillion naira. And that is not just our borrowing. We have Amcon debts. You know, Amcon debts are local debts, the ones that mm, our sick. people mismanaged yeah. mm -hmm. and that government has absorbed. Yeah. That's Amcon debt. Then we also have the debt, the overdraft that the government is collecting from CBN, mm. in addition to the foreign loans. And all of this has been progressing steadily over the years and is estimated that by 2026, it would hit 92%. Now, I know our government will deny it. They say, no, where did they get the numbers from? What's it? What they are just projecting, you can undo it. It is projection, mm -hmm. feedback. Take it and let us start working on a way to ensure that we reduce our debts. Our debts. Increase our so, revenue. but I guess another way to look at it is that okay, so every month you're earning 10,000 naira. So, mm -hmm. all out of the 10,000 naira, 90,000 naira is going to be paid. Yeah. You don't have basic. anything else to do. Mm -hmm. It's just, mm -hmm. and it's just so so cost of living. now. You'll be and broke, but broke least, then. And but at least the, the 10,000 naira is still coming. Mm. Abi? Yeah, so we hope that by then. They will get more than 10,000 naira. Mm -hmm. So we have something to worry really about. Really, so in just <coughs> APC chair race narrows to Almakura, Adamo, and Musa. More trouble for Osuba Cup, Abukiyari. Makide yeah. confirms Balagun as Ulubadon. Again, court orders EFCC to stop further actions against Okorocha. Uh, PDP to Buhari sign electoral bill amendment into law now. 49% Wasi candidates obtained five credits, including maths and English. <clears throat> Over 8,000 child soldiers recruited by armed groups in Northeast, says yeah. UNICEF. And um, 2023, PDP APC presidential tickets will determine Igbo destiny, says Ohaneze. Let me start with the major headlines. So, <clears throat> the National Convention of the APC draws near and is looking like the... Um, um, the, the, the governor, Governor Buni, may not be the, um, the, the new chairman of the, um, any, uh, of, the, um, of the NWC, actually. So according to them, to narrow down to three people, that's the former governor of um, current senator, let me see the names here. I have the Alaji Umaru mm -hmm. Sanko Amukura, the former governor of Nasara State, exactly, I was trying to get that. And then there's another, uh, Abdullahi Adamu, ex-governor of Nasser State, and Elijah Sani Musa, who is a senator representing Niger State. Now, these are the few contenders that might become the uh, chairman of the APC after the, after the convention coming up in February. Sure. Now, this means a lot. I mean, we try, we try really hard not to take all these political stories. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm taking it was because they've been back and forth. Remember last year, um, the governor of Buni was a temporary... Um, chairman that was appointed last year, I think it was June or July, yeah, June 2020 actually, was appointed. The Yobi State Governor was, um, was the acting national chairman pending the, the convention which is about to happen. And now it's looking like um, he, he, might not be able to, he might not get it and, and whoever becomes the chairman determines critically who's going to become the ticket holder mm -hmm. for the presidential ticket. So that's a major deal for APC and they're working towards to see who the next chairman will be. Oh, yeah, so you so, okay. Yeah. okay. On the other hand, he's saying that uh, wherever Nigeria picks their presidents from in 2023 would determine the destiny of Igbo people in the country. They said the group has been lobbying, uh, all the political parties have been lobbying, the PDP, the APC, so that at least they can field an Igbo person for the presidential ticket. They also said that, um, uh, you know, some, it, it's been heard in some quarters that they are not fighting enough for this presidency, but they said they've been fighting since 1960. You cannot accuse people who are always making noise about marginalization of not coming out to fight. They've been fighting, and this is an opportunity for them to get this. This will show that um, the Igbo people are capable, they are patriotic, they have credible personalities, they are eminently qualified to govern the issues in the country. And when they do that, we'll see that there will be fairness, there will be justice, there will be equity, and they will know that they actually belong in the country. So they are appealing to political parties and every other person who has an interest in Nigeria to ensure that they get their turn to, you know, govern the nation. Thank God, Okay, okay, go I ahead. Have one. So UNICEF, um, on the um, day, they call it um, International Day Against the Use of Child Soldiers. It's also called Red Hand Day. And UNICEF is asking and calling for the end of recruitment and use of children by armed groups in Nigeria. They said for over 
uh, for about 13 years in the Northeast and the conflict and insurgency that has been happening there, about 8,000 children have been recruited. And um, in those 13 years, thousands of lives have been lost, livelihoods disrupted, access to essential services by adults as well as children have been disrupted. <coughs> they are asking Nigeria to sign the handover protocol for children encountered in the course of armed conflict in Nigeria. So this handover protocol is to say that when children have been arrested for being part of an insurgency group, they should not be um, locked up. Instead, they should be taken to civilian home and, find, and then find ways to rehabilitate them and bring them back into society, giving them the proper support. Children are not meant to be locked up because they didn't choose <coughs> this life. Yeah. This was, you know, their lives, their real lives were snatched away from them by these insurgents. And there's also an act in addition to that. There's a um, convention on the rights of the child on the involvement of children in armed conflict, which says that you cannot conscript any child that is uh, not up to 18 years of age. But I am worried about the implementation. They are appealing to the government. Which of the governments is going to implement, you know, rescuing these children and rehabilitating them? Is it the government that's still struggling to even stop the insurgency in the first place? So they should come up with ways that they can also assist in rescuing these children. Okay, we have to wrap up. Um, Vanguard has most of the stories already taken, but um, finding a story that we haven't taken, I think most of the stories that we've taken it. Congratulations to the Ulubadon and the people of Ibadan because yesterday they got the letter from the governor that confirms that the, um, the new Ulubadon will be Senator Lake on Balogun and everybody started celebrating. We're mm -hmm. waiting for the date of the coronation. The governor had indicated that he would be um, sending an official letter yesterday when he was at the burial of the former Ulubadon last week. So I'm sure this is good news for all the people of Ibadan. Also, the law that was passed previously um, elevating some people, that has been set aside. So I'm happy that peacefully there will be handover to the next episode. Okay, good let's, call a quick, <laughs> let's call a quick break. When we come back, we want our hot topic of the day. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So the biggest story in Nigeria this morning, obviously, it's suspended from a head of the Nigerian police's intelligence response team. Let me say that again. The head, former head of the Nigerian police intelligence response team. <clears throat> so they gather intelligence <coughs> for us. Now, his name is DCP Abba Kiari. He was arrested by the police. According to reports, um, he, was he was arrested hours after the NDLE, that's the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, declared him wanted over alleged drug links. And we got a, a press release from the NDLE that he was brought over at 5 p.m. Um, to the office yesterday. Mm. And um, right now he's been interrogated alongside four others. Now, as I said, it's the biggest story in Nigeria today, and everyone is talking about um, the... Um, all the various angles of the case, the case they have against <coughs> him, what they're possibly trying to find out. But from, all, from, from, from on our show this morning, our, our conversation is more about who do we trust mm. if in a, a, such an important body like the Nigerian poli police, <laughs> which is an, and, and he was the former uh, person in charge of intelligence gathering, the intelligence response team. And he was a highly decorated person. I mean, they called him Super Cup. Mm. Is someone that so? What um, what are the factors that make somebody a super cop? What are the various indices that are used as a body like the police to determine who is a super cop? And this this culture of connection, the culture of I know me, no, you know, I know this person, he's my guy, I know him, my guy, and how, how people just use that to raise to the ranks. You know, you think about how do we therefore go ahead, move forward to trust each other mm. if somebody is so high at this level. Who be engaging this. in drugs. I know NDLA, we keep saying it. Mm -hmm. They've been busting and busting. And we said mm -hmm. there's a higher level. They've busted. They're busting everyone. these little guys. But we they know 
that they are, they're, they're, there's a higher level. Mm. Yeah, there's this international link. There's a cartel. So I'm so happy. First of all, we must applaud NDLE for the work they're doing so far. And I'm so happy that they're doing it without fear <clears throat> of anyone. But at the same time, this our super cop has been arrested. Now, he's still innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Because Nigeria, again, you don't want a media trial mm -hmm. where we see all the cases on social media. And tomorrow now, he's, he's free. So let us not get too excited. Let's be sure, hope that NDLE has the airtight case. But in your thoughts, what came across to you when you saw this news? And what, how did it make you feel as a Nigerian? If you ask the question, Mariah, who do we trust? My summation is trust no one. Take everything you see and hear with a pinch of salt mm. or a bucket of water, <laughs> if you like. Because it's become increasingly obvious that there is more than meets the eye. Mm. When you see people you're supposed to hold in high regard, respect, people who you see that they are, you know, here we always talk about people uh, showing track record, putting in the work, consistency, you know, just keep working, keep doing it. And now you see someone who we can say has been putting in the work, who has shown consistency, who has shown excellence. You now hear this sort of thing. It just sort of confuses a whole lot of human beings. My question would be, at what point did this change happen? At what point was he bought over? At what point did he allow greed? Because everything I see is simple greed. You're working, you have a good job. I don't know how much he was earning at the level that he is in. That's enough to have a reasonable family. Take kids to a good school, reasonable. Have access to quality health care, reasonable, like a normal human being. So at what point did you decide that this is no longer enough for me and I'm going to join team with these criminals and cut some, you know, cut some things for myself? At what point? Mm. We don't know that. Mm. So um, how do we now begin to trust people at the helm of affairs to say that some people are actually clean if this sort of person can be caught doing this. And one thing I noticed, when um, Hush Puppy fingered him, I told myself, for Hush Puppy to have the guts to finger this sort of person, there's something in it. But you know Nigerians now, we found a way to do this and do that. And others yeah. are also saying that this is likely like a smoke screen. They don't want him to answer to the FBI. Probably that's why they are now coming out to arrest yeah. him now. <laughs> that they must too, have gotten this. This is a huge smoke. Yes. It's, just it's to a, cover. This, is, this smoke is I really too huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so yes. smoky. Um, if, it's, if it smells like a rat, you know, it's shaped like a rat, mm. and rats hang around it conveniently, then it's likely to rat be is a in rat. the DNA. Mm. I started getting worried about our super cop with the level of proximity he had with people that I should be suspecting mm. and with the level of wealth he displayed for his position. Mm. I started suspecting him from that point. It, you have this kind of cars, this kind of, you're hanging out with people that you should be investigating, people are listing your name. It is looking too much like a rat for them not to be rats in the DNA. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this yeah. is, this for me, we have, we, this, this just fits. I, it, when, when, um, I, when the story of Hoshopi came out, people were still in doubt. This fits. And it just, and the question of who to trust is the time of, it, the, the Bible scripture of you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. scornful. You don't stand in the path of the sinners. Mm. Like there are things, if you the want wicked. to live a right life, there are things you just don't do because you want to live right. Mm -hmm. So now, by all standards, I don't, I don't doubt his rise to prominence was legitimate. I feel strongly like he rose to prominence with a legitimate hustle and strive to do the right thing. And then but corruption will fight back. And you mm -hmm. need to have the strength of character. I pray for it every day that God give me the strength of character to say no mm. to that very attractive thing because nobody knows what they will do when they are yeah. faced with it. Nobody knows their So price. for me, it is, I am grateful to the entire team of NDLE because what makes a country stand out is not that everybody is perfect. It's that we have one perfect person that would look anybody in the face and call, that, call out their BS, mm. that you, this you cannot get away with it. And I am grateful we have such person at the helms of affairs at the NDLE who's been able to bring out this. Mm. There are many issues with um, the police, many. 
We can never forget the fact that a known kidnapping kingpin mm -hmm. was released. So today. And we don't have justice till now. There is obviously a rot going on there. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. And I'm grateful that we're fishing it out yeah. one let by me, one. Let me get, get your, your yeah. thoughts on this. Because I know you've always pushed the NDLA story. You always talk about it almost yeah, every day. Every day. But you said, when I heard the story, what, you yeah, know, how what did I respond? I screamed. I was like, what? <laughs> I did not scream because he was arrested. I screamed because I thought, you mean the system is allowed to work in Nigeria? Mm. You mean we're allowed to That's print good. things like this and put up videos of high-level um, you know, appointees in our country? And I, I felt so proud. I felt so proud that NDLA did the work. I felt so proud also when I read today's paper and it said that the presidency insisted that this report must be, um, this must be properly investigated. So it says to me that, you know, that we are willing to give Nigeria a chance, that there are some people at the hems of affairs that are willing to do the work to make sure that Nigerians can trust the system. Many times, the reason why Nigerians are always struggling and, and screaming and shouting, and when we see crime committed, we take our faces off, is because we feel, wow. well, nothing is going to come out mm, of it. And, and today we have this story. I hope, honest, you know, honestly, that this will now be done are finished properly because um, the smoke screen you're talking about, today's paper say that he will be sent to the United States. Okay. So that After smoke this. screen is no longer a smoke screen. Mm. Mm. They will do that. And I hope that when he gets this investigation is done, every other person, because we know he couldn't have done this by himself, there has to be other people involved that every other person that has been named will also be brought to book. Mm. I hope that all the lawyers that will be involved in prosecuting mm. and, you know, will do the right thing. I just don't want us to get to a point where mm. there's, no for case. Reason, yeah. there's no case. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's kind of break because um, this issue of extradition, there's a, there's a law that was in Section 3, Subsection 11, Number 9 of the Nigerian Extradition Law has a certain clause that might not let him be extradited, extradited but when we come back, we'll talk about that. Stay with okay. us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, where are we? So, NDLA. Messages. Yes, take messages. Yes, yes go ahead. Bashiru showed and they said, kudos to NDLA. Wait, the guy let me take Bernard. Sorry, he's okay. in holding. Bernard, are you there? Hello, Bernard. Hello, Bernard, are you there? Go ahead, Topan. So, um, Bashiru showed and they said, kudos to NDLA. Under the guidance of Brigadier General Buba Marwa, on Habakiari's um, drug cartel. Yeah. Some such corrupt law enforcement officers should be fully tried mm -hmm. and face the full rot of the law. Um, Billy says it's a good ploy to stop his extradition to extradition to US. Mm -hmm. Most of us saw this movie coming mm -hmm. all along. Mm -hmm. We are not mm -hmm. moved. That's another that 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 smoke screen. People, they yeah. we do conspiracy theory, but I let, 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 I know that mm -hmm. it might seem you know it really really look like this is true, like it's a smoke screen, but it's it's a it's a lack of trust for the system mm -hmm. that is responding to us seeing the system seemingly work for the first time in a long. So let me read the bill, but let, let me take Bernard and I'll come to you with the law that um, was quoted earlier. Okay. Good morning. Are you there? Hello, Bernard. Hello, Bernard. Hello, Bernard. Thanks for calling. Bookie says you're online. Mm. Okay, so section 3, subsection 11, number 9 of the Nigerian extradition law states, extradition application will be rejected. So the American extradition to us will be rejected. Okay. When the fugitive criminal, that's Abakari, has been charged with an offense under the Nigerian law. Okay. Other than the offense at which the surrender is sought. Okay. But has neither been discharged or acquitted. So while he's still facing this one, mm. he can't go anywhere yeah. now. Oh. But however, based on what we said, <clears throat> what um, uh, Mariam said earlier, that should this, instead of us seeing, getting excited over, over the, the, the rest, 
Should we be more excited that a parasitic of the Nigerian government is actually working, seems to be working? Mm. Maybe if we have just this one man soldier, if all we can do and achieve in this country is bring down all the cartel, the drug cartels, mm. maybe Nigeria can actually move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't believe in being excited that people are, that are paid to do it, their job, they are doing their job. Okay. I don't believe in that. Okay. Uh, I believe in encouraging them to do what they're supposed to do because of the rocks that we've had in the system. It's like me clapping for you now that you're sitting down and hosting. That's your job, you're paid for it. So we just need to encourage them more and pray that the system does not find a way to choke them again from doing the work. But I am even curious about the fact that uh, um, the US is calling this guy to answer. What's, what's the role of the US in this? Mm -hmm. what's, why, why is the US playing this sort of police? What is their connection with not just the Hush Puppy case, but also Abba Kiari? This is, this is a sovereign state. The crime, whatever, did not happen in the U.S. What role are they playing oh, exactly? There was, People are asking there was questions. The US. No, that was the he, was, the... he was arrested in... That's what he was arrested in Dubai. Why isn't Dubai being the one to call him The for... crime was in the U.S. He committed a crime. crime. He defrauded the U.S. US. So yes. the U.S. in processing their um, entire investigation found... A link between Abba yes. and, 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 and they're so calling they're him to answer, answer for yes, that's what, happened. what he did there. Okay, let me take Hassan. Hassan, are you there? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, very sad moment in the annal of security network of our country, Nigeria. And uh, please, we should ponder over three main issues here. Mm. The issue of the porous nature of our borders and the airports. airports. Because most of these cocaine and the illicit drugs were caught right inside Nigeria. What happened to the policy of our borders? Number two, mm. we should ponder over the issue of exhibit. Sure. You can see that people are selling drugs to us as an exhibit while they are taking cash. Okay. With what recently happened? That's number two. And the, number three is this. We should see that Corruption is really fighting back in Nigeria because this guy really started well and we can see what he did. So my question is, you see, I really want us to go back to who else is in this cartel? Oh, good. people are saying this on, <laughs> who else? Um, on, on our YouTube page. Yeah. There are lots of comments. To, um, Tommy says, I bet it's just the errand boy and there are other bigger players. Yes. And, bigger um, and he's the DG of NDLA ready to start naming names. Because, you know, we've been asking mm -hmm. the sponsors, else is sponsors of, of the Boko Haram. Haram. They've been naming these names for the past oh, many years. Yeah. Ola okay. says, we should remember that this is in Nigeria. Investigation of high-profile cases like this don't usually lead to conviction. Mm. If it gets to court at all, let's just wait and see. Yeah. And I'm worried yeah. because we've, Evans hasn't been resolved. Yeah. Um, the kidnapped um, Wadume, Wadume yeah. hasn't been resolved. Mm -hmm. We have many cases that it seem to be dragging for such a long time. And the CGN has said, don't blame the justice system alone. You people don't have a airtight. A airtight case. You will come today, it's five counts. Tomorrow, it's 15 counts. Amended to eight counts. All of this doesn't look well. So mm. the, there's a level of seriousness required on all parts. And, one of, and I need to remind our president, because I remember when he was coming for this job, his number one was to fight corruption. If this is going to be what is going to be like his legacy, he has just a few more months to live, mm. to be so, here. Yeah. He can actually just make this yeah. an exit package for Nigeria that will yeah. feel like, oh, forget That's what one. he has done in the past. This is what he did. Yes, so as much as I understand the cynicism and the you know, lack of trust in our system, I want to concentrate on what has been done now and what we are talking about today. And I think that this is a victory. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we should see how this can um, you know, be done so that a proper conviction is carried out at the end. I believe that this is the time to investigate the police force investigate colleagues and other officers. This is the time that the presidency, you know, should do that as, a, as, as an emergency. Because for him to have been able to carry out what he did, 
I feel this has taken quite a long time and there may be more people complicit in this action. So I will see government seriousness. If from today I start hearing about um, people getting arrested mm. in force, uh, um, better officers replacing some officers because some other officers are under investigation. I mean, we've watched um, movies where we see this sort of thing happening. Immediately, Everybody's people are falling on the wayside. Yeah. People, is, uh, more, people, people are being called in to replace. <laughs> then we'll know that something is happening. If this is just a way to stop you from extradition, I don't even know how I would prefer to be labeled a drug, drug pin instead of someone associated with someone that right. had, you know. So if this is it, I, it's just so elaborate right. and too much. But if it is not, if it is really serious, government should start investigating right. the whole also, police force. Let me take this call, because Lucky's been holding for a while. Lucky, are you there? Hello, Lucky, are you there? Okay, we lost the call. Let me take a final yeah, comment. Yeah, so um, we should also um, check our associations. You know, when speculations come out that uh, you're hanging out with this person, you're hanging out this way, and this person has a questionable character, you should look at yourself. Why do I want to hang out with this person who has a questionable character? Except you're saying publicly that I am like this person, mm. and it's okay for us. So pick a side. If you're a politician or you're a government official, and you know corrupt people, and you're hanging out with them, you are going to their parties, you're spending money and all of that, and you want to take their side, let us know that is where you are, and and it doesn't mean anything to you okay. that to stand on the side of the law and also for leak with people here yeah, fraternize with people who are seen to be corrupt individuals so also um i think um we need to do more as a government especially in this sort of case we need to do more there are conspiracy theories that even um uh, uh, police officers exchange and give out guns to criminals, they keep collecting. We've had that over and over till today. Nobody's investigating it. So we need to do more to help us. All right, so that's what we can take on this. As I said, it's still, we don't want to talk too much on it until we see the process. That's the most important. We've done yeah. this with Wadume, we've done this with yeah. um, Evans and Amy and all them. So we really don't want to go into this roller coaster. We're hoping that Lendela does have an airtight case against Abakari and these four others. And once we have a conviction, eh, eh, we can now have a robust celebration. Conversation. conversation and celebration yeah. over this. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we have another hot topic for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. One of the most horrific stories we take on this show every, almost every day is about either ritual killings or kidnappings. There was one that came today about a man that kidnapped a 16-year-old boy, actually. He's not yet an adult. 16-year-old boy um, kidnapped his niece. And let me tell you, let me read out what he said, his confession. He said, yes, it is true that I kidnapped Halima, my cousin. I hid her in an uncompleted building on the outskirts of town and then put a phone through to her father. I told them, I demanded 70,000 naira. I threatened that if they don't pay the money, they're going to lose her. And then I terminated the call. Unfortunately, my conscience pricked me that this path I have told is dangerous and against my religion. I'm very sorry for my action. I'm asking for forgiveness. I've realized my mistakes. Hey. Now, what happened, I think, was a woman was passing by, and she saw the picture because, I mean, of course, the parents raised an alarm about this child. And the woman was just walking by, uh, an uncompleted vision. She now said, I not the child that they're looking, they're looking for. for. That's how she alerted the police. Now, this 16-year-old is a GSS3 student of one hmm. of the schools in the locality. They're thinking that a teenager can kidnap a child. I mean, I can't you, who do we trust? I can't we have even to imagine it. Who, who, are, who do we now leave our children with? Or hmm. A teenager is asking for 70,000 naira. God knows what he wants to use the money. Yeah. For what? So, so phone. Yeah, or phone game. or do Valentine's or something oh, like that. God. So, it's, see, we'll hear stories like this as long as children don't see the end result of bad behavior. You're talking of the 60-year-old. This morning, or was it late last night, my mom showed me a video of three or even four-year-old. They had kidnapped one of their siblings, a much smaller baby, and had tied him in the bushes. Tiny children, as in they could barely walk, they had done that. So we're talking about this thing. We're constantly saying it in their ears. They are hearing about it, but they need to understand that there is a consequence for this behavior. And many of them don't see that. 
We see people kidnapping. We hear they came into a village, they ransacked everywhere, they left with things. So all of a sudden, they're looking like heroes. Because it means I can just walk in, take what I need to take, with it. kidnap a few you make people. the front page. Before, before you know it, I've made so much money. We're hearing how much billions have been going back and forth with this kidnapping thing. So I can do it oh, then. Absolutely. I can do it as a business and I can get away with it. But once they find out that you don't get away with it, they catch you, That's they lock the you up, then the you will not do it. Moreno, Simple. this is becoming an epidemic. Like, this is becoming something that we need to start screaming about. It's not, <laughs> you don't, there's something they say, if dance, pass a uh, hand, enter elbow, you know, it's, let's take this serious. Yeah. This has gone beyond what we are just saying and what we are just talking about and what we are, what we feel is not around us, it's not near our dwelling. Uh, the other day I was having a conversation with my children and I said, I'm going to take you people to Yaba Left. I want you to see uh, what happens to people who end up taking drugs, how they live out their lives, they are hospitalized, they are not able to think properly. Some of them go crazy. And my son was so scared. He said, no, 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 I don't want to see. I said, no, you need to see. Because it's time we start paying attention. You people are, you, you claim you're doing class, right? But I know that you people go on social media. I know that. So I'm not going to tell you not to. I have a teen, teenager already in the house. So I'm not going to stay, stay off the stay of that, stay of that. But I want you to understand. Take responsibility for your actions. I will teach you to the best of my ability. This is right and this is wrong. It's still your choice at the end of the day. But I will show you the end of that choice. Yeah. So that if you know that you want to go crazy in this regard, you may likely end up mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. So I think like Miriam just said, Children need to start seeing the consequences. And how do we start? This is a case in the example. Abakiari. If he goes away, scot free, mm. without being punished, without people seeing an the enormity of the punishment he's going to receive, yeah. that is it for us. So yes. This case will be worse. Mm -hmm. A woman will now carry a friend home and kill the friend. Yeah. And, and just move on, move on and yep. feel, is it not 70,000 naira? Mm. What do you need the 70,000 naira for? It may just be to buy clothes. So just like the story you took earlier, a friend mm. was invited over yes, and in they, the they cut off her head and she was about that. We the become about savages. Her. Yes. So we become animals. So like, I, like you have both rightly said, justice is what prevents us from becoming savages. It is when justice is served that we, re we retain sanity as a society. Um, however, for me, it's a case of it's not a parent's job alone. And yes, the parents have a huge responsibility. As a society, we must all be looking out for one another. And yeah. that's, one of the, that's what even rescued this situation. Because somebody saw and said, you know, that um, if you see something, say something. Mm. Must become our culture. Because if we don't take responsibility for everybody around us, then it might just be us that somebody else will have to be reporting, this is what happened to the person. And at this point, young and old, let's talk. Let's, let's engage people. Mm. This little boy, whatever the reason he wanted to spend the 70K on, he must have thought about it. He would have stewed on it, planned it in his yeah. head. And nobody, there was no interaction with anybody to sow the right ideas into his mind. The social media space is sowing. There is a lot of seeds being sown on social media yeah. of how to make money, how you can cut soap, how you can wash cut. yourself, ah, how you can join a group, mm. how you can become part of a team, a clique. But talk, when we talk about this, is a, but nothing, is, nothing is being done about it. We just talk about it like casually. Mm -hmm. You cut soap, you know, you go on social media and say, okay, how do I make, um, how do I make is, money? So my pastor said something so, years back. Um, advice is not a take it or leave it. Every advice is a seed. It's been mm. sown. It's been sown into your spirit. It's there. So mm. even mm. if you choose not to use it now, it's the right. day you planted. are desperate, you just remember. Ah, ah, they can cut soap somewhere. This been little planted. girl that I'm seeing mm. just running around like this. Mm. If I just put her inside the boys' quarter and make phone call, it's a seed. Mm. So what I'm saying is, as a society, we must now just be, begin to sow the right seeds. And then it's good that this nothing is everywhere. It's so not good. The other All day, that conversation must be happening so, every okay. day. So now let me let me let me bring it to this angle. We know several countries have tried to um, um, regulate social media. Yes. Because of these kinds of things. Yeah. You know, countries where, I don't know about Saudi Arabia, but I don't know there's a country in the Middle East that was trying to control what their people consume. What you can if say. we try that here, Allah Jalai Muhammad will try to do that and we'll shut him down. Mm. And we're the same Nigerian who say, mm. leave them alone, no, leave Twitter alone. Mm. The American company, leave them alone. It's but you see, we are not ripe. Let me finish. 
the, the people that we have, the Nigerians that we have, we, we don't seem don't to be completely for right mm. for that kind of freedom. Yes, mm. yes. We need some kind of we need some kind of regulation to ensure to mm. reduce. So, so freedom of speech is free, mm. but it's not absolute. Yeah. Yeah. So we, there has to be some kind of curtailing of mm. this freedom that we mm. have mm. to social media because people, <coughs> Babala was everybody on social media saying, "Come and take." Mariah, oh. that's why I agree with the scriptures because even the scriptures had commandments. You have to obey. Mm. Salvation is free, they say, but you have to work out your salvation mm. with fear and. Trust. Mm. So there must be a form of regulation. Me, I agree with, the, with what I'm seeing right now. For the sanity of our children, I agree with the social media regulation. regulation. We, we are not ripe, like you say. We are not, we are not in that space where we can wholly take responsibility because our systems are not working. Yeah. So mm. if, I see, if we sort out our systems, they are working. You know that when you commit a crime, you are going to be punished severely yeah. for it to mm -hmm. deter a lot of people. Then you can now give freedom for people who are responsible enough. Freedom comes with responsibility. Yes, but a lot of freedom comes but, with responsibility. Yes. But to, um, not to put it only on social media mm. because these things are real-life events that are happening with real-life people in real life before it comes to social media. We have to, even when it comes on social media, we have to see on social media the end of things like that. Mm. We have to see those group of boys who were making the videos and telling you what to do, how to cut soap, how to kill someone, how to cut a head, how they, how they were arrested on social media mm. and how they had to serve the punishment for their bad behavior. Because yes, I understand how dangerous social media can be, but it can also be a powerful tool for And I do not want us to just throw it away. So. It is good to regulate it yeah. in a way that um, you know we protect, especially our young viewers. Mm. But we also know that it is a reality of our times. It is here to it's stay, an and we need to use an opportunity okay, so to I change mindset. I agree with you mindset. somewhat because I agree with you somewhat because I think social media have have only has amplified what was before. Mm. So we agree. Yeah. But we, there, was, there was ritual killing back in the day. Yes. We know all this bad vice happened back in the day. But because we, there was no social media. So we're saying that this amplification has gone to the point where it's now damaging yes. to so even the most, the most vulnerable of the yeah. society. So, so I, I feel that, um, I think Mario and I were discussing in the makeup room this morning about, or maybe it was on the show, um, the fact that statistically research has been done on the psychological impact of, of social media, early exposure to social media on, on the minds of teenagers. Mm. I feel that yeah. we had the innocence of being sheltered. Like, our only influence was maybe a bit of TV and yeah. our environment. So mm. our parents could curtail our exposure, the knowledge we are getting. Because, yes. every, like I said, everything consumed is a seed mm. and it will germinate. And when you are online, everything can come to you, come your way until you start pulling it down. So for children that don't even have the emotional intelligence or that ability to self-regulate, mm. to trim it down, they are unable to do so. So we need to go back and ask ourselves, should we expose teenagers to social media so fast? Maybe they should become full adults for the world. Adults, go on. Teenagers are never allowed on social media. The thing shows the age. Yeah, yeah. We are allowed to take children on social media, even though it shows that they are not old enough to be using are they, it. Are you there? Thanks for calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good morning. Why are you alive? Go ahead, please. You're old. Uh, my comment, this is a serious issue. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Very yes. clearly. Go ahead, please. Okay. This is, this is the issue. This Abakiari issue is a serious case. You can... Tomorrow, if they catch an army officer, maybe a major, that is in catch your Boko Haram, causing Boko Haram, mm -hmm. how will Nigeria say? This is more deeper. This is... Okay. When Africa became wanted, Abakiari, uh, lawyers in the north, about 19, those of the state know, it's our man. Mm -hmm. Now, this is it. Buba Marwa to be given highest honor in Nigeria. That man is savvy. When he was a governor in Lagos, that is the only time I slept in, uh, in the house when I come to Nigeria. Otherwise, I go to hotel. Because the security was so tight, no arm robber in Lagos there. Buba Marwa is a class, a general. He reports directly to the president. That's why I was able to sort it. If I was near under Attorney General, there is no way we will know about this. They will kill the thing. They will kill everything like that. It's a serious issue. The whole world is watching Nigeria. It's a serious issue. The Thank you very much, Ade. The of those supporting terrorists in our country, you will mm -hmm. see Thank you very much, Ade. You know, interesting thing about Bubba Mario is that he's not going around media. You don't even have the scene. We had to so force him. We had to force him. him. Like, right yeah, like, like, and he says, because I'm just focused on my work. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. here before. Let, let uh, Baba Femi be talking. Me, mm -hmm. I'm just doing my work. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to this. This Please, matter. Yes, let okay. me quickly just conclude on what I was making point earlier. Of course, like Mariam pointed out, 
teenagers shouldn't be allowed on social media. Most of these is 16 and 18 and above yeah. that should be there, but we're having teenagers there and we're allowing them. So we as parents take a responsibility for that. Number, number two is the fact that as a society, I've always said it, we need to have a goal for our no country. Yes. What is our core goal as a country? Yeah. So mm. anything that would run contrary to that, we, we shut it down every Quickly. way. You see, it is the reactionary move, seeming reactionary move of the uh, minister, minister of that made it look like if it was if there was a plan mm. the goal for this country is that we want all children to be engineers anything bam, that will be contrary bam, to bam. it we are not going to allow it in social media or anywhere else where china made a move that nobody will have children it was it was a bit draconic but they knew that yeah. if they didn't control their population they will have major crime on their hands mm. and so everybody born one if you born more than one you are in trouble so the the country needs to set goals because a society that is not regulated is a society in chaos. Yes. And we are seeing that chaos seeing everywhere right now. <sighs> okay, let me take uh, Michael. Michael, are you there? Yeah. Michael, listen to me, not the TV. Are you there? He's still watching TV. He's watching the TV. Oh. TV is delayed. Okay, we have to go ahead. The eye is the window to the soul. Whatever you see, as often as you see it, becomes you at the end of the day. You mm -hmm. think you can, you can see it and decipher. Mm -mm. It's sowing a seed, and it goes to a place of your subconscious, which will come up tomorrow. Now, um, I think we all need to work together if we really want this to work. One of the problems I see is that there's a lot of illiteracy. The people that are really illiterate are the ones who go ahead, who climb and sinker without asking questions. So they see on TV... The common, the people like us are able to decipher that this is entertainment, this is just a movie, this is fiction, this is not real. But they see it and, whoa, it worked this way, let me try it and it will work. And that's what a lot of these young people are picking up in killing people and kidnapping their siblings and all that because they feel, okay, it worked in the movie, we didn't see any consequences, I can do it and go away yeah. with it. But we know better. The people that know better are few. And so the responsibility is on us that know better to start talking to ourselves. I w went to a party recently, and I was not really happy with the way money was sprayed. I just started thinking to myself, what are we projecting as a society? Can we put money in envelopes and just pass it? And I think we need to go back. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 hold on. Like, don't reach. No, 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 no. <laughs> you are fed up. Yes, I'm rethinking because we keep doing the... See, if you do something over and over and it's not giving you the results you want, why don't you change it? Mm -hmm. It's not working for us. Please, Please yeah, wait, 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 I saw place. another video. Let me finish, my right? I saw another video <laughs> yeah. in church. I want to go back to the and money And they were one. spraying money in the, on the altar. Yes. And the man was scavashing and yeah. jumping up and down, I'm like, what have we turned into? Anyhow, go and make the money. No! See, and see, yes, that's what if we thinking. as a society need to go back to the values that we had, some things will have to change. Some things will have to change, and we all have to work together. So we're not saying don't make your money, we're not saying don't spend your money, but don't just put it in people's faces, because not everybody can decipher mm -hmm. that you worked for your money. Not everybody can decipher that your money is yours. Not everybody would understand that you went through a process. Not everybody Absolutely. would understand because you that. Absolutely. Be telling the story to everybody. Ah, yeah. Let me take this call from Adi. Adi, are you there? I have a convert. Thank you. Right. <laughs> You're live. Go ahead, please. I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 only, I want to contribute my own view. And the thing is that, hello? We can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yeah. The thing is that the people, I mean, Nigerians are alive for social media. But our problem is that if our government, those ruling us are not right for it. You see, take any Nigerian anywhere, okay? We will match up with everybody. But these people, they lack, I mean, we don't have a, a false law guiding social media, okay? We don't, we don't use our laws like other nations do, okay? If we have Nigeria, uh, if you have USA, America as Nigeria, they will commit the same crime we are committing now because nobody is holding them accountable. Mm. Right, absolutely. The system works there. So you see, but if, if you take somebody who commits a crime in Nigeria or so just let them take somebody who is uneducated, illiterate, yeah. who is very vulnerable yeah. to what the what social media is offering. Carry that person to US, he will also be, he will also be a criminal. Mm. He's going to do exactly the same thing yeah. because it, 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 it's about, it's not so much about 
Education is important, absolutely. But do, who so, you right? are, I, think, yeah. I really don't think so. Mm. Because they would, the justice the system, system works faster would, than yeah. Yeah. So He would enter this community, trust, trust me, the community where they read and work. He's not going to enter that community. Because he's used to take, getting things for free. Mm. He will easily enter the community of those who oh, wow. deal in drugs. Mm. Because that's what he's familiar with. But what would mm. happen there? Well, if, they get, if, if they get caught, they, go, they mm. spend their life in prison. If they get caught, there's no, there's, there's, there's no, there's no, there's, you see the lacuna we have here where, um, when you're very connected, you might not, you might escape justice. Mm. Yeah. People, there's no, that lacuna doesn't exist there. there. So we need to, we need to strengthen the justice system here to reduce. And we have like, Lima shared a story yesterday of a man that spent eight years in prison awaiting trial. And that's how you, innocent person, spent eight years in prison mm -hmm. awaiting trial. Lawyers are jumping and dropping the case. We have a system that seems to make you feel bad when you're poor. Let me, and let me, let me say that as well. We don't share the stories let me, let me, of our let me, struggles. Let me, let, me, let me discuss that a bit with you because even abroad, there's connection. Yes. At the level, at a higher level, yes. yeah. we at the bottom level, we have no we idea of the connection yet. because yeah. the system is yeah. the one that regulates us. Yes. But at this Bill Gates level, mm, there's uh, connection. Uh, but yes, 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 yes. yes. the same way here, but it affects results for the child. But on, uh, uh, there are some celebrities so, uh, too that no, don't have, you know, no, no celebrities no. don't have that connection. Okay, let me say this. Eh. Yes, how I see it yes. is that there's a system that works, and if that system catches you, oh, hey. it gives the they are allowed. The system is allowed to catch you, maybe for those who are not high level, a little they'll catch you, but the system is allowed to catch you. If it catches you, a celebrity, yeah. top person, red-handed, yeah. you cannot, you you cannot, like yeah. you cannot yeah. leave. Yeah. But here, the system can catch you red-handed, fully covered in palm oil, you, and you can still get yeah. go away yeah. scot-free. Yeah. 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 So that's the difference. And I feel, too, I agree with you, that when you take someone from our society and put them there, they walk through the systems. We hear a lot of people complain, oh, I have no place to stay. They have shelters. Oh, I have no job. They can go into an office to say to write down their names to say that they want jobs. There's a system that's sort of trying to encourage you. Most of their people who fall off the wafer, either they are very lazy, or they are drugs, drugs you know, drugs. or people who are pushed. They, you know what makes it sad for our own in Nigeria is that you find people who are intelligent, who are willing to work, falling into crime because mm. there's no option. There's the whole group of people. But there, of course, there's also the group of people that are just greedy and materialistic. But there's a group of people that I just wanted to do better. I just wanted to earn something. I just wanted to... And this was the option available for me. There's, right, there's, there's, there's always that's all we can take on this segment. I mean, as I said, we, it's sad that we are constantly discussing do ritualism, um, kidnapping. It's really, really it's like pathetic. It's, it's, I just hope there'll be a time we come on this same show and these things would have been something of the past. I mean, yeah, so I so. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we talk about, we have a bringing our guest. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So there's a bill to amend the National Health Act of 2014. It's before the House of Reps. And if it is passed into law, officers who spend public funds on medical tourism will risk seven-year jail term. Joining us on the show is the sponsor of the bill, Honorable Sergius Oju. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Hello, sir. Are you there? Honorable Oguns, are you there? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, you fantastic. Know. Good. Now, so we took the story, I think, earlier in the week or something last week, where we were actually surprised that, ah, why would you want to indict one of your own? You know, because it seems like self-indicting somewhat, where public officers would have to face seven years, and I think there was a fine of 500 million, I'm not, I'm not sure what the figure is, of if they, if they actually spend public funds for medical tourism. Why did you see the need to sponsor this bill? Okay, well, we, we have to get it right someday in this country. Um, I heard part of what you were discussing this morning 
in the studio there about banditry and all that. So like I keep saying, in lawmaking, we should look beyond our zest. We should look at 200 years from here, if Jesus tarries. Which kind of law, what kind of country are we bequeathing to our children? Mm. So that you are in public office today does not mean tomorrow you will not be out there. So like one of the guys are called in talking about um, a crime committed here, if there are no laws in the US, people will commit the same crime. So it's just to have a, a society we can all live in, we can sleep with both eyes closed. Some of the decisions we have made in this country to, are responsible for why we are where we are today. People are talking about Boko Haram now. We have banditry. We are talking about ritualists everywhere. It didn't just start yesterday. As much as I would have loved to criticize the present government, you know, but it didn't start today. It's been on for a while. So a situation where you have public servants go treat themselves overseas. You are the ones that write the budget. You are the ones that pass the budget. You are the ones that are sent to it. You are the ones that execute it. Then when you have a headache or you have ear infection, you travel overseas to go treat yourself. Then if you're an executive, when you come back, everybody will come out to thank God for you. You do Thanksgiving. Hmm. Come on, if you use that money, if you put that money in here, we'll have proper healthcare service. Yeah. So what I'm just saying with this law is an existing law, but there are no sanctions. So hmm. what we are basically saying is if you flout it, you should be punished. Hmm. I know people have complained about maybe the penalty is too high. But it has to be like that. You know, the former EFCC chairman, Nuhuri Badu, gave an example. Somebody that moved out, a governor moved out close to $15 million uh, under the guise of medical treatment abroad. So the penalty we have been talking about is less than $1 million. Less than $1 million. So I don't think it's, uh, it's, too, much. it's okay. too high. Like most people have said, it's too high. But uh, I don't think so. All right. so I'm, I'm so happy for this. Uh, sort of bill because we talk about this every day and we have always said that if you can hold people responsible in such a can way... Can you speak up, please? I can hear you. Okay, if you can hold people responsible in such a way that they have no other option, they will make their things better in their own country. I am excited about that. Thank you so much for this bill. But we've also heard them say, like you said, um, you cannot travel with government funds but we've heard them say that they have money from other places they work they do some other businesses how do you now determine that the money is not government how do you prove that uh, the funds, funds they are traveling with is government <clears throat> or not government funds uh if you travel overseas with your personal money nobody's going to hold you responsible for that how yeah, do you prove your personal money sir that's the question how do you prove personal money? Yeah, yes. of course, okay. Don't you know how much a civil servant earns? Okay. If you go overseas, you go overseas, you are a deputy director or an assistant director in a ministry, or you are even a governor, a deputy governor. Don't we know your salary? Mm -hmm. So how can you go overseas and your bill in the hospital is about a million dollars or close to that? Mm -hmm. You know? Not that we're even talking about that. What obtains today is that they actually write it, they write and approve money from vouchers. Okay. To say this person is going for medical treatment, like the one the former EFCC chairman was referring to. There were documentation that that particular governor was going for medical treatment overseas, and the state government had to pay that bill. Mm. But if you are a governor, you, you claim that you are building state of the art hospitals in your state, why can't you use it? That you have to write voucher, there are memos, approving money mm. for, you go right. to, for you to go overseas for treatment. Let me get a few more questions in so for you, sir. So we know that. Because of time. OK. Right. OK, so I just want, I would like to find out how are your colleagues responding to this? <laughs> what are they saying? What challenges or pitfalls have you encountered in pushing this bill? <laughs> Well, if you, if you remember, parties. we discussed this sometime last year. This bill went through second reading, uh, second reading. You know, my, some of my colleagues challenged it then. Then, you know, we had to skip the public hearing. And then it was never scheduled for close-by-close -close consideration. That's the Committee of the Whole. And it died naturally in the 8th Assembly. Mm. Then I have resurrected it now. 
that is even coming back this late for second reading tells you that there's already trouble. But we will push for the public hearing by the grace of God next, next month. And I will need the cooperation of everybody to push this to go through. I will not say my colleagues are not cooperating, but of course, you saw the hesitation on the floor that day. <laughs> we saw it. Hardly anybody voted against it. So we have to work together. I mean, when I mean we, myself, you, the media, and everyone in this country to make sure that we get this, you know, to work for us. Because I will tell you this for free. When people are in government, they believe they're going to be in government forever. Mm. So they really do not bother too much about people out there. But even the 1% can take care of themselves. Allow something to go down for the 99%. Because we are not taking care of the 99%, because we are not bothered about the 99%, is why we are in the hole that we are in today. Yeah. So we need to start thinking about the 99% and not the 1%. So whether you are in government or you are not in government, Nigeria belongs to all of us. Interesting. Good. So um, I'm happy with your clarification, because this means that a governor can travel abroad on a medical trip as long as he's not raising the funds from the state's coffers, he's free to go. The, um, and I know that the law is reaching down to civil service, all political office holders, including, does, does this extend to uh, ministers, commissioners, like how wide are you trying to capture? And what can we do, those that are watching now that are feeling like this is a good policy, what can they do to, um, to push this law into being passed? How can we pressure Maybe our, our lawmakers. lawmakers. What is it, what would you like Nigerians to do to ensure this law gets passed? Okay, there is already this law already exists. It's section forty six of the Health Act oh. exists, but a we, there is no sanction. Yes. Mm. And hence, so what we are just trying to do is, is okay. There should be a penalty when you flout this. We should hit you. We should pay this amount of money, or you should go to jail for this number of years. Okay. So all, all you can do is, I have told you now we will push for the public hearing by next month. So you can do a program around it. Then we also try and sensitize the civil society. All hands should be on deck yeah. to make this happen. So, like I said before, when people are in government. So how did you arrive sorry, at this fine? Because that's the real bone of contention. Yes, the bill was there, the law has been there, it's been there. But this sanction of seven years, and you're saying that some people are 500 millionaire. Someone, someone said, I don't spend that much when I travel. Why would you find me that much? So how did you arrive at 500 millionaire? They don't, they don't have to spend that much when they travel. If you take a drop, if you take a toy gun, take a toy gun and attempt to rob somebody, and the person is robbed and you are caught, you don't say it's a toy gun, because to that person, it's a gun. If the person has a weak heart, the person will die. And when you are caught, you know the sentence, you know? So that you have flattered the law. Is irrespective of how much you are going to spend. Irrespective of how much you are going to spend. is a law. You have broken it. Because I know we are going to revisit this during the public hearing. They might reduce the fine and the jail term. But if you like, we can make it 20,000 Naira. So anybody that wants to steal government money and travel every other weekend, and if you find the person he pays 20,000 Naira, it's up to us. I mean, so let me, say, let me, belongs to all of us. Sir, Honorable, I want you to help Nigerians get clarity on how this thing works. So I am a senator right now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Miss Minister, and I'm not feeling very well. Now, I know my, my salary is maybe half a million a month. Let's just say 500,000 Naira I earn. So how do I get the government to pay for my medical bills? Do I apply? Yeah, I live, I get apply, vouchers. I get yeah. a voucher. Now that voucher then pays internationally. Yeah. So yeah. Just, now that this voucher is illegal for me to ask for this voucher. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what he's saying. Get approved in the, first but, place. So, wait, wait, the process is how do I prove to you? How, do, how does that approval happen in the first place? Yes. When it is illegal wrong. already. When it's already illegal. If you have a law yeah. that says it's illegal, um, why, how does it get approved? But they've not been following friends. the law. I want Honorable to explain to us how that kind of voucher gets approved. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Let me read section 46 of the Act to you. 
without prejudice to the right of any Nigerian to seek medical checkup, investigation, or treatment anywhere within and outside Nigeria. No public officer of the government of the Federation or any part thereof shall be sponsored for medical checkup, investigation, or treatment abroad at public expense, except in exceptional cases on the recommendation and referral by the medical board, and which recommendation and referral shall be duly approved by the minister or commissioner of health of the state, as the case may be. So you see there is a window. It's not, it's not completely closed. If the referral board can send this to the minister, in the case of the federal government, or the state government to the commissioner, and you can still get approval. But what is happening now is indiscriminate use of state funds. Yeah. So there's really a law that says don't do this. But what we are saying is there has to be penalty for doing it. Mm -hmm. If the law says don't do it and you are flouting it, there has to be a penalty. Now the president travels out for treatment. Who we don't know that he went through all this. Can we demand? People should be able to ask questions in the future to say, did he go through all this? Can we, say, did he refer this to the referral board and the minister of health and all? Mm. You know, in a constitutional democracy, we cannot afford not to do things the right way. Because when you are not when you are not abiding by the same laws that you are making, what are you telling these people we are calling bandits today? You know? Okay, sir. I, li I like this law, um, this bill that you have just passed. I really like it. Mm -hmm. But um, in my opinion, um, Nigerian politicians and lawmakers are very smart. You can still find a way to circumvent it. Um, one of the things I would rather have proposed is to ensure that if you decide to serve the country in the terms, the number of years that you are serving your country, you cannot travel outside for any medical attention. You will do it here because you are serving. When you are done with your year of service as a private individual, you can travel outside the country if you have the money, the capacity to do that. But while you are serving the nation so that every resources that we have can be deployed into our health care. Imagine if all your children had to go to public schools. You will pay attention to the kind of buildings that they have in those schools. You will pay attention to the kind of teachers that they have because you have a personal interest. What we see is because there are no personal interests when it comes to the things that happen to the masses. Mm. We behave like we don't care. So it will yield more fruits for us as Nigerians to believe that our lawmakers patronize the same hospitals that we patronize. So you see the problems there. That would have been better for us, sir. My dear sister, you, <laughs> I owe you a hug. We are having public hearing next month. You can send in your submission. Hopefully, keep <laughs> sending your submission. I will, sir. That's why it's public hearing. Okay, sir. Everybody is free to contribute. The second leg that you mentioned about the education, I already have a bill to that effect. They also failed in the last house. It was so sad. Under the same circumstances, there was no uh, public <laughs> hearing, and it was supposed to be slated for committee of the whole. It never happened. Mm. And that bill you see in the works now. So that will take, we will take that one for second reading any time. And I'm, I'm sure you, you, know, you will hear a whole lot about yeah. it. What I'm saying with regards to living this is when the point I have made to my colleagues, this bill gives you, I mean, the window is there for you to travel. If it's an extreme, it's a case that we cannot handle here. And this bill even allows you to travel with your own personal money. Because there are so many of us that were doing our own stuff before we came into government. But if you do not accept this, a government will come someday, a national assembly will come someday that will say the minute you are serving a public office, you cannot travel out at all. That's part of what you are saying. Yes, and your sir. kids must go to public school. Yes, sir. As it is today, you can use private hospitals in Nigeria. Yes, sir. Your kids can go to private schools. Yes. But if you do not accept this, if you do not hold this, if we do not accept this holistically, so a government will come, it might even be in 2023, that will say the minute you are serving in government, your children will go to public schools. Mm. And your, you and your children will go to public hospitals. 
general hospitals. I am 100% support of that. So what we are saying today, accept this. You have the window to accept this now. If you throw it away, what is coming might not be palatable. Mm. But the way we are going in this country, I see that happening any day. Mm. All right, sir, Honorable Sogo, Honorable Ogun, mm -hmm. there's a point I, really, I would like you to help me address concerning these sanctions. Because there are always, it usually takes two to tango, or even more than two <coughs> sometimes. And in this kind of situation, it's just not the person who um, wants to go abroad, I think, should be sanctioned. The process, somebody approved it, Thank even you. though they provided different evidences. Shouldn't there be a, some way of scrutiny, a scrutiny of how and when or, or, or why this person needs this support, for, uh, financial support for medical tourism? So there's, a, there's all just the goes, but let me, let me borrow a word from Tokwe, the lacuna in the system that somebody can actually request mm. and a proper investigation is done, done to ensure, to, to even verify if indeed what he's asking for is something that is totally terminal and then the government can support. But there's somewhere, something happened that's causing this indiscriminate request where we are constantly paying uh, officers to travel abroad for medical services. So should that sanction also cover that chain? Yes. Do you think? The accountant general's offices well, you know, as a nation, we can only take this things one step at, at a time. time. I'll give you an example. I, some years ago, where there was an audit in the company I used to work for, and they told me we used to get the drivers to write the fuel they take from the station, write the, the number of the vehicle, the amount spent, and the station itself. The auditor told me, no, get them to take receipts. I said, well, it doesn't matter. When they collect receipts, they can always manipulate it, yeah. you know, between them and um, the people issuing it. And the auditor said to me, it doesn't matter. Just tell them to bring the receipt. We can use the receipt someday to verify one. Or secondly, if they give them a plain receipt and they write it, a day might come, they will not be willing to bribe, and that person will not be willing to give them the receipt. So this is the point I'm making. There's a referral board, and then there's a minister or a commissioner in the case of a state. If all these people can connive and indiscriminately begin to approve these things, a day will come that will be an audit. Mm. And there are already civil service laws to jail those people. You know, so it, we are a nation and we are evolving. So let's take it one step at a time. Let's stop these people. Mm. Let's punish those that will go and spend government money without approval. Mm. And like I said, my sister mentioned there, we might even have to amend this going forward to say, if you serve the government, you must use government facilities. Mm. You and your kids, be it school, be it hospital. Mm. All right, okay. thank you so much, Honorable. It was a pleasure having you on the show to clarify uh, the sanctions that have been attached to this law. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. So, ladies. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I've I mean, I, the, the, I agree somewhat, but at the same time, somebody who's grown a business all his life, you've been a businessman, and you want, they'll tell you like a Donald Trump, I've built empires, and I want to serve my country. Mm, so yeah. I'll now say, because I want to now serve, as a, mm. you're, you're, you're a real estate mogul, <laughs> and you've made all this money, mm. and I say, you talk about, I want to become the governor of your state, mm. and now the last say you shouldn't travel abroad for your children. No, 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 no. so the question the is, the, this, mm -hmm. this um, what's the proposal, said just, yeah. it's proposal, you know, you, when, when you want somebody to cut the, like, I want you to cut your hand, I will not tell you to cut the two hand, so that, because you need one hand to cut the second hand, so now what he's trying to do is, let's make a law that is passable. Because if we do that kind of one, nobody would even assent to it mm. on the floor. No, so what no, is he I'm now? talking about this business proposal. Yeah, yeah. This proposal will not even, will not even, will not even if it, it sounds good. We've all of us can vast for what BC just said. We've said it over and over again. It will be ideal, but it will not, it won't get anywhere. Why? What he's proposing now is we might be able to push yes, for it to I, get well, somewhere. I'm not disputing well, that. Well, okay. There's yeah, a question I've always had that I feel that he, he hinted at it, but I've asked this question several times, right from the first, the, the moment the president went on that first uh, medical trip. trip. Who is funding President Mahmoud Buhari's medical trip? Is it Nigeria's funds that is funding the trip? How much is the cost of the trip? I don't think it is too much for Nigerians to know how much the president has spent so far on medical trips abroad. I, think, I don't think it is too I much I think to Sarah passed that information. There was, so, they did, there's some investigation asked, on this. So that's, that's on one hand. On the other hand is, like you said, 
there is a law already on ground, but the law needs to be, it might not, there might not be penalty, but you don't have a right to sign something that is already illegal. So the people that approved the funds for a governor, for a minister, for a commissioner <laughs> to travel on, up on the bill of the states yeah. can be penalized for it yeah. if they are taken to court by civil society. Yeah. Yeah. So I also completely agree with Opia Julu because every day here we talk about localizing our democracy, localizing yeah. our solutions. Yeah. We have a problem at hand right now. It may seem unfair, and I think it can be unfair that someone who has worked so hard for their money because they want to serve their country, we stop them from traveling abroad or, you know, accessing whatever it is that their money can afford them Luxury. to access. But we have a problem, a peculiar problem, where funds that could have <coughs> otherwise gone into the establishment of infrastructure, um, training of um, personnel, is being used to fund trips abroad. It just doesn't make sense. Mm. And because we have found ourselves in this very unique, peculiar situation, we need to look for the local solution for, for it. And it has to be that those who can afford to get access to our funds to travel are not given that access anymore. And if they understand how um, serious mm. Nigeria is, they will reconsider. So for me, it will even make the caliber of people who want to run for office to be those who truly want to serve Nigeria, not those who want to just get access for their own personal interests. Thank you so much, Miriam. What is the meaning of service? We are thinking of getting leaders who understand the problems we have. We are thinking of getting leaders who are ready to lay down their lives. A leader is a servant. We don't just want to call it a servant leader, but a leader is a servant. And that means that you put the interests of others before your own. So we're saying, we're not saying you should not have access to all the money you have made. You are serving for eight years. Only that eight years, use public four facilities. Years. You are serving for four years, use public facilities. When you are done with your service, we tell you, thank you so much, God bless you, goodbye. You can now go back to the um, wealth that you have made for yourself. I can afford to go abroad for medical treatment right now. But if I want to go into service, I will use Nigerian facilities. Do you know why? So that I can understand when they say there is no paracetamol yeah, in we, that we, hospital. We, 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 so that I can get it. So we want people who are ready to serve, not people who are going to put their interests first and think of how they can make money out see, of the I, system. I, I, see, and this is one way that we can scrutinize I, them. I, 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 listen, what you're saying on face value, very, makes very sense, good. but the truth is, Realistic reality reality. sets in. Oh. You have a five-year-old that needs a medical emergency. Your child, this has a medical emergency. Oh, and oh, because I'm a public servant. Oh, and they don't stop now. No, 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 no. Yeah. I didn't know my child gets sick. Hey, 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 no. hey. Wait, you can resign. Wait, wait. We can we resign. Of no. course, you can resign. No, we yeah, must resign. Yeah, resign. Resign. Yeah, resign. resign. Yeah, resign. resign. We must make those sacrifices. You must make those sacrifices. You must make sacrifices. You must make sacrifices. We have to finish it. Just make it, Shari. I beg. I just. The reason why I try to argue that is because I know that. The way we see things outside from the it's private is totally it's different. That's Once you enter the system, it's totally yeah. different. That is yeah. what yeah. That is what we are totally that. That that I want to serve, and mm. we enter there, and I will suspend traveling mm. abroad till I finish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or else I will not go. Okay, let me see. Well, I, I, have, I have two more minutes. Let me paint another scenario. <laughs> okay, okay. okay, So you're, you're trying really hard to, um, to change um, the system because yes. you, there's a problem in the system. There's a problem. That only you have them. You're like a boob at now. Okay. You want to fix the problem. You are, you are the only man that can fix this problem. And you're working hard. Suddenly, your child falls extremely sick. And they said the only surgery that you can do is abroad. And I, yeah, the person, you know that I'm, as a I'm the one that's pulling down the biggest um, cartels in this country. If I leave this job, these guys are going to now go with their all going to take over the Nigerian drug market. And, if I, and I resign. That is, no, that's the you reality of the That is the reality of the shop. I don't I, I agree with so you. So we are right. Value, but I'm saying that it's not easy, as you're yes. saying. Yes, yes. I agree with them. Like I really, really agree with what they're saying. I'm just of the opinion that your scenario I just painted, it's country a country will not grow without sacrifice. They yes, sacrifice. No. They say sacrifice. Uh, democracy is forged on the blood. It's blood though. People actually spilled blood yes, people for the freedom that they have in many, many countries. The black people have freedom in America seemingly simply because they the refusal, the stoppage of traveling abroad mm. is so that you can put the money. Facilities here. So a Buba Mara, by the time everybody has made that sacrifice, will have good the facilities. facilities to treat his child yes. here in Nigeria. That's yes. Yes. That's it's not, it's no, not no, about no, it's yeah. it. It's and immediate. Where there's money available, sure. has and and have the money we'll see right. you tomorrow. Please. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.